Well, boy, Mother Nature is glorious, but she is also rather unyielding. Um, so having not been up to the farm and done any work on the pond restoration for a while, where we've cleared away brambles, uh, she's decided, oh well, that means I can grow thistles and other weeds and grass here. So <laughs> it's looking a bit mad. So the field behind us has been topped, cut, and here is the pond. Um, and it's gone mad. So the thistle, the uh, brambles are here. And this is where we were cutting back to, so we've cut brambles all back from here. And you can see the dead part of them there, but our thistles have well and truly taken over. They won't last long, they just need to scythe back. Um, and I probably won't even bother doing that now. I'll wait till winter. The uh, willow, too, that was all cut back as well, but look at all those willow whips have come up now, so I need to cut all of that back. Um, all of this wood is old, so this is, she's really gone to town here. And um, we'll go in here a little bit. So if you remember, I actually planted this up with some, some primroses, primulas, foxgloves, and uh, it's growing a bit of bare earth, and it's growing back crazily. Um, you can see that these brambles are starting to creep back, so we'll cut back all these brambles today as well, and just let the rootstock not get hold. And then here is our pond, which too is also grown over rather a lot. But as with everything here, it's short bursts of work and we'll see where we get. Well I am down in the pond restoration and I'm in the bit that I originally cleared out last year and boy is it overgrown. Um, I'm just going to turn the camera around so you can see. Look at all that. So we're in the actual pond here. The water has receded all the way back here but this whole section was full of water. You can see where we put the original plants are there that is our yellow flag iris right over there, but you can see how much more has come out. But the amazing thing is, this is a plant in down here. I did not put the original water plant in here. The original is way back up there. So it means that this is already spread. Um, and actually there's a couple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear out all of the excess willow, um, willow bay herb. Um, this um, ash has started to grow up again. So I'm gonna cut that back. I'm going to cut back this hawthorn and, and open this space back out again and we can see exactly um, how many plants have sort of self-seeded because I think there's going to be some water forget-me-not. In fact, I can see some. There's some water forget-me-not in here, um, just down here, but it has spread. And also the mint, the water mint, has spread all through the back here. So I'm going to cut it all back and we'll see what we're left with. want a good pair of uh, succoteers like I did I've just got been uh, sent these new sensei uh, succoteers they are super super sharp really impressed with um, how sharp they are and how easy they are to use as well especially with these lovely grips um, I'll put the link for the Amazon store um, below you can buy these in Amazon here in the UK if you are abroad I'll also put the link in for the main website so you can buy them but uh, if you're looking for a new pair of succoteers highly recommend these uh, little sensei succoteers well I've made a good dent, I've had a good cutback, uh, but it is definitely time for a cup of tea and I'm going to go and see how Saad is getting on. So whilst I'm up at the uh, ponding stuff, so Saad is down here in what will be his, his business and he is up on this mound. We don't know why the mound is there, but it is made of soil and it has been there forever and you can see there's holes in it, so there's probably a rabbit warren. Uh, but let's go and see what he is up to. So what, what are you up to, babe? Just clearing out all these brambles and nettles from the mound here. Um, what are you going to use this mound for? So this is a natural mound of the soil filled up, um, just next to our farm um, barn. It's going to be um, a very setting for vulture conservation that I'm going to be setting up. Oh, cool. And what I'm just doing is clearing out the spaces here, and you can see behind, a lot of it's cleared up for the pheasantry. So well. the pheasantry is going down in this bit? Yeah, so they're behind the top and then the vulture's aviary is going to be built from this office. So is the mound going to be included in the aviary? Yes, yes. Oh, cool. And then what, They'll so the front of the aviary will be over here, so yeah, they'll look out over this way. 
That'd be nice. Um, um, why are you doing vulture stuff? Why are you into vultures? Um, I think they're really, really underappreciated in nature, and then a lot of the vulture species are quite going extinct. And we need to help. They're such a key part in the ecosystem um, of like clearing up that stuff, and they're not being appreciated, and they're not their numbers are dwindling down quite a lot. Um, so just help out in UK. There's very few conservation um, work here. So I do want to get involved and do my part in it. So you're going to try and breed some vultures and also like do some educational stuff? Absolutely, yeah. So the main part of it will be breeding and education. So just making the public aware of their importance in the environment and then working with perhaps other um, uh, conservation groups. Um, and to, zoos and things. Yeah, exactly. Zoos and conservation groups to um, work with them to increase the population in the wild. Cool. Voila, a new entrance is formed. <laughs> That's loads. I can't believe how much you've done. <laughs> yeah, a lot more to do. Never ends. Well, like everything on the farm, it always takes a lot longer than I think because the space is much bigger than I think. But I've had a good clear out and I can finally show you that we have found the edge of the pond. So um, the water is right through there. But actually, where my foot is, although it looks like there's nothing, if you put your foot down, there's water. This is really boggy. So there's still a lot of moisture in here, and hopefully we'll have a lot of rain over this winter, and it'll bring it all back. The good thing, though, is that amongst the dry, although it's been quite dry, and this is um, the edge of the pond, and it's obviously not got any water in it, the plants have done really well. So the yellow flag iris is there, and that has grown bigger. The original plantain that we put in is here, so this water plant in, but there's another one here and there's another one there, so that's seeded. Uh, the water forget-me-nots were around here and all of this is water forget-me-not and you can see these are the unmistakable seed heads of the water forget-me-not, so they all have sown all across here and then the water mint, which was a tiny plant, all of this, this is all water mint. So this has done really, really well. What I'll probably do when we head into winter is come and just cut that all back to the ground. It smells divine, but at the moment we'll let it flower, we'll let it seed, we'll let it do its thing. And um, you can see how much came out. So that's just one pile of stuff. That's another pile of stuff. So a lot of stuff came out of here, um, but it's nice to see the pond kind of coming together. And it's nice to see that even though we've had a really dry year, this has stayed wet enough and boggy enough um, that these plants can thrive. I've still obviously got to cut all the way round here. This tree's got to come down. Um, and there's a little inlet up there that goes round. So I'm going to put some more plants over there. And I bought some lovely um, uh, irises from the Eden Project. Uh, they were on offer. So I've got those as well. But I'm knackered. So, and I'm covered in uh, blood from prickles and thorns and brambles. So I think I'm going to call it a day. Well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we have definitely got so much work to do before we move here next year. Um, not only have we kind of got to get all the trees in this winter and the nuttery sorted, several of the projects um, cut back and bramble thickets cleared, but we need to plan for the animals. So I need to start building coops um, to move the chickens up. Um, I need to, Saad needs to start um, building a couple of pheasant runs so that we can start to house those reeves. Um, because when we move up, the animals need to be able to come straight onto the land. So we've got that to take into account too. Uh, if you've liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. If you're on Facebook, come and join us at Brimwood Farms Community Group um, and you can catch up on all the latest going on and also chat to um, other guys and girls doing their gardening and their small herding stuff. Um, and I shall see you again very soon. Bye bye.